Welcome to Workshop Wednesday, where we take you into our workshop once a week. I'm Steph. And I'm Vicki. And we are in a new location. Do you know where we are? We were at my house in front of my new purple pegboard. Last week we released a project explaining how we did this in our favorite hooks, so check that out. We'll put a link to that below. Fun fact, Steph is the first person in the entire United States to get this purple. Well, in the world. In the world, In yes, the world. In the world. <laughs> Wall Control, in fact, said that they worked on this color because I specifically asked for it, which is really cool. That's pretty cool. That's pretty, pretty cool. cool. That's yeah. pretty cool. A few weeks ago, we posted a human dog drop zone, and in that video, we said we had a little oops moment, so we want to share um, what the oops moment was <laughs> and how we took care of that. Mom put on the dog paw stencil and then she put the word my dog well you can see the G actually overlapped one of the paw prints and as we looked at it we thought you know you really can't read dog anymore it's not we need to redo this and I really didn't want to do that over because it was really a lot of work so I thought well let me see if there's a tool I can use to kind of sand it out and try just removing that G and that paw print so we have a Dremel multi-tool and as you can see it has those triangular sanding pad and it's fairly small so I was able to sand out the entire G and the entire paw print and then I went back through the whole thing where I did the preconditioning and I put the stain on then re stenciled it and you know what it looked great i was so pleased that we will correct that mistake that oops mistake so here's the final product can you tell that the g was redone i can't tell no, i think you, you can't can. yeah so it worked out really well so don't be afraid you know try the things out before you completely go back to the drawing board you know it may work out <laughs> or may not and you will have or to it may not work out but, but you never know yes <laughs> but that's that's the first thing you should try is yeah. try to correct the mistake and then if that doesn't work then Sandy, a sander is your friend. Yes. Oh, and speaking of sander, that goes right into our next segment. We're going to take a closer look at the Dewalt battery powered sander. Yeah. And we showed that in our PVC outdoor screen that we made. And there was a lot of sanding with that. And there were a lot of small pieces. And I thought, I just, I'm not going to be able to do that just traditionally well, holding the sander and sanding these tiny pieces. So I thought, well, I wonder if I can just turn the sander upside down and use it like a hands free bench top sander. And you know, I was able to do that. I was so excited. And this is the sander and I used a tiny piece of wood to make it flatter and I just clamped it to the workspace and turned it on and it was absolutely perfect to use as a hand-free sander. Mm -hmm. So mom, people may be used to corded sanders. What's yes. the difference between the cordless and a corded? Obviously the cord. Well, yeah. <laughs> Obviously. I was very reluctant when they were first coming out with these battery powered sanders because I really didn't feel like they would have the power that I needed. I'm used to using a corded sander and I've always had excellent results with them. But I started trying these and they are as powerful but way more functional than a corded, corded sander. With this I just keep it on one of the shelves on my pegboard wall. With a corded sander I would be very reluctant to get that down, sand something small. I just wouldn't do it. But with this pulled down from the, from the shelf, I sand whatever it is, put it back and done. You know, not sacrificing anything by having it battery powered over the corded. Yeah. And we've tried out, we have the DeWalt and the rigid battery powered sander, but mm -hmm. we've also tried out the Milwaukee and the Ryobi and they all work really well. So if you're looking for a sander, I, I would probably invest in a battery powered. Makita also has one. We have not tried it, but I assume it's probably yes. really good. And, um, you know, we made all this sawdust, so now we need a way to clean it up. <laughs> so Steph's going to talk about a favorite thing that she got a few weeks ago and literally has not stopped talking about it. <laughs> I really like it. Let's go. Welcome to Favorite Things. So today I want to share my favorite thing. I just got this a couple weeks ago. It's right here. This is called a Swiffer Vac. And you're probably familiar with Swiffer, you know, the Swiffer pads that pick up hair and dust and particles and things like that. Well, I have Swiffers, I use them all the time, but sometimes there's bigger particles or bigger chunks of stuff that need to, that, that the Swiffer can't pick up. And that's where the Swiffer vac comes into play. And that's right here. So it's just a basic little vacuum that's on the front and the Swiffer pad goes right here. So I bought it not thinking, I kept the receipt because I was like, I don't know if this thing's gonna work. But I got it, and let me tell you, I have been blown away since I got it. I love this thing, that's why I wanted to share it. It's related to the cleaning, and that's important, especially now that I have my dog. So I want to show you a quick little demonstration of how this works. So the quickest way to make a little bit of trash here is to give my dog a treat. So I'm going to give Mac right here a little dog treat. Come here, girl. Here, girl. Here you go. And you'll see that she is a little messy with her treat. She's gonna leave a little bit of mess here, so she'll clean up, but there'll still be some particles. And um, I'll show you how this works. Hi. 
I love that this is lightweight and it's battery powered so I don't have to deal with any cords and it keeps a charge for a pretty long time. Also, it's super easy to maneuver under things and the head has a lot of flexibility and can move really wherever you need it. Also, when it's turned on, it's really not that loud compared to my actual vacuum cleaner. It's really quiet. Now, I'm not saying this is a solution for an actual vacuum cleaner because you wouldn't use this on carpet. I have a couple rooms with carpet, but most of the spaces in my house are actually hard surfaces. So this is great for keeping those clean, all the dust, all the little particles. I can use this every day and it takes no time at all. And we want to remind you guys that for the last two years, last two, two years. years, we've been partnering with the Home Depot for um, the prospective tool campaign. So every quarter we get a lot of cool new tools to check out and share with you. And this is the start of the next quarter. Yeah. So one of our favorite things that's arrived so far is a new chainsaw. <gasps> and it's funny that we should be excited about that. But when Hurricane Michael came through in October, Steph had a, tree, a small tree yeah. come down in her yard. Just part of it. So it's just this stick that's small in but big enough that I need a chainsaw yes, to take it down we, yes and I've already started reading the manual because we always read the manuals for new tools mm -hmm. and there's something I got to share with you because it just made me laugh out loud and I literally took a picture of it when I read it so this is a line that is very um you know I'm glad they wrote it yes you know I would not have known it otherwise <laughs> so it says if the tree starts to fall in the wrong direction or the saw gets caught up during the fall, leave the saw and save yourself! Exclamation point! Save yourself! So if you didn't know, if, if the tree know, starts then. falling on you, save, save yourself. yourself. Don't take your tool. Uh, so good information in the uh, manual. Always read the manual. Um, good information. Good information. Well, we appreciate you joining us and we will see you next time. Bye! Bye.